Today's daf is daf Yud Gimel. Uh, we're going to start at the Mishnah on the bottom of Yud Beis Amid Beis. And the Mishnah says, Maskirin Yisius Mitzrayim Balelos. We mention uh, the going out of Egypt at night. I'm Rabbi Lezben Nazari. Rabbi Lezben Nazari said, Harei Ani Kiven Shivim Shana. I am like a 70-year-old. V'lo Yisachisi Shetei Omer Yisius Mitzrayim Balelos. Ad Shetar Shabin Zoma. Okay, now this is uh, the famous the famous statement meant by Rabbi ben Azari that we say in the uh, Haggadah on Pesach night. He says, I am like a 70-year-old. And this is a reference to the fact that he was only 18. He was uh, instituted as the Nasi. And the story over there, as we'll see later on in uh, in the Masech, and he's, his hair turned uh, turned actually to 18 strands of white. So uh, so he says, I am like a 70-year-old, even though he was a, a young man. And he says, well, it's a and I was not, I did not merit that uh, Yisrael Mitzrayim should be said at night, that that should be the halacha. Ad Shadar Ben Zoma, until Ben Zoma came along and found this source for it in the verse. Shanem the verse says, Lamat Tiskar, you should remember, Es Yom Tzeisacha Me'eretz Mitzrayim. Kol Yemei Chayecha. You should remember you're going out of Egypt all Kol Yemei Chayecha, all the days of your life. Now the drasha is Yemei Chayecha Hayamim. The days of your life it ret- refers to the days, to, uh, during the day, when we said, we mentioned Yisrael Mitzrayim during the day. And Kol Yemei Chayecha, the extra superfluous word of kol is coming to include halelos. The chachamim or the chachamim who argue and they say it's only uh, the responsibility of saying uh, mentioning going out of Egypt is during the day. They say this verse is talking about yimei chayecha. The days of your life is olam hazeh in this world and kol is lahavi lemos Mashiach to uh, when, when Mashiach comes. Okay? So the Gemara says, Tanya, we learned in a brisa. Amr lehem ben zoma lechachamim. A little behind the scenes of what went on. Ben zoma told the chachamim, v'chim askirin yisis mitzrayim limos Mashiach. Are we going to, in fact, talk about uh, the going out of Egypt in the times of Mashiach, when Mashiach comes? V'halei kfar nemar, already said, hine yamim ba'im no Hashem. Behold, days are coming, says the word of God. V'lo yomru od, and they will not continue to say, chai Hashem. Okay, Chai Hashem means literally God lives, but it's a it's a language of of that's used in oath. They're not going to say uh, a, a, a language of, of oath of Chai Hashem that brought us the Jewish people out of Egypt. Okay. Instead, they're going to people are going to uh, in the future when the time of Mashiach, uh, hopefully soon, will come. People, are, uh, all the miracles are going to occur. Then people are going to say Chai Hashem when they're going to want to swear, make an take an oath. They're going to say by God who brought us out and brought all of the uh, the, the the children of the house of Israel from all the uh, the northern lands and from all the lands that they had been pushed out to. Okay, which is the kibbutz Goliath. So you see from here that no longer uh, uh, to, seemingly is the deal of, of Yisrael Mitzrayim going out of Egypt going to be such a big deal. The conversation is going to turn, the focus is going to turn to uh, the the fact of the Geula, of the of the, of the uh, Sheba Malchus, of leaving you know the, the Gullus that we're in now, this 2,000 year old Gullus. So the Gemara says Amr Lo, they answered him Lo Yishetay This doesn't mean that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is going to be uprooted and it's not going to be discussed at all. It's still going to be the foundation. The main event is going to be Sheba Malchus, okay, which was the uh, servitude of the kings, meaning the Gullus that we're in now that we're going to get exiled from. That's going to be the main event, the main concentration. But the foundation, you see, is going to be tough a load. It's going to be secondary, but it's still going to be the, the beginning. It's going to be the beginning of the Gula, right? Of all Gula, of Gulas. So the Gemara says, "You see, it's Mitzrayim Tafalok Yotzebayat Amar." Similarly, we find it says, "La Yikra Shemcha Od Yaakov Ki Im Yisrael Yeshemecha." That Hashem told uh, the the Malach told Yaakov, "Your name will no longer be Yaakov, Ella Yisrael." Okay, your Ki Im Yisrael Yeshemecha. Your name will be Yisrael. And the meaning over here is the same kind of concept. So the top of you, Gimel and Aleph, Loi Sheye Aker Yaakov Mimakoma, doesn't mean that the name Yaakov is no longer going to be used at all. Eli Yisrael Iker, Yisrael is going to be the main name that the, the, the Yaakov is going to be referred to. For Yaakov Tafaloi, it'll be secondary, but still the foundation of his name is Yaakov. For Chenu Omer, and similarly we find, Al Tiskeru Rishonos. There, this is a verse in Yeshai that says, don't remember the first ones, the Kadmonios Altis Bonanu, and the earlier ones don't think about. 
Okay, don't uh, don't reflect upon. So what does that mean? Al Don't remember the first one's the Shibat Malchias. Okay, that's the Shibat Malchias, and this is this is Yeshaya's Nevua. But after Mashiach comes, the Kadmonios and the earlier pains that you shouldn't think about. Al you shouldn't reflect upon. Zut Yisus Mitzrayim. Though that's going out of Egypt. Why? Because Hinani Ose Chadasha at the I'm going to do something brand new, uh, and now it's going to sprout. And what is that? Taner of Yosef, Zum Lachemes Gogu Magog. Okay, the war of Gogu Magog and the, uh, the the saving that Hashem is going to do for His people, the Jewish people, is going to be of such a grandeur, grand, such a grandeur, and such a uh, uh, it's going to be done in such a fantastic uh, way, magnificent manner that it's going to it's going to it's going to basically uh, shadow out all these other uh, things that occur to us, like uh, Shibun Malchus and uh, and the and the, and the Shibun of Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim. Okay, so the Gemara says, "Mashal l'mad dever doma." What is it comparable to? La adam shayim mahalech baderech. A person is walking on the way; he's on the trip. Who pagabaz ev, and he runs into a wolf, and he gets into a fight with it. Vinitzel and he gets saved from the wolf. Vayim misaper vaholech. He goes on on his journey. He tells everybody he meets, "I just got in a fight with a wolf, and I was saved." Pagabari, and then continuing on his journey, he meets a lion. Vinitzel and he gets saved miraculously from the lion. Vayim misaper vaholech maisari. Now he's going to tell everybody how he got saved from a lion. Pagabanachash. He meets a snake after that. Venitsum and he gets saved. Shachach Maisa Shnehem. He forgets the other two completely. I had the boa constrictor wrapped around my neck, right? And he goes around and tells everybody of that that nace. Afkach Israel also the Jewish people. Saras Achronos the more recent uh, pains. Mishkachas the Rishonos make them forget the earlier ones. There's always something new. Okay, so that was so. Now the Gemara is going to talk about this concept of name changing. We brought in because of we said about Yaakov changing his name to Yisrael. So it says Avram who Avraham. Okay, now we know Avram was his name originally, and Avram, Hashem changed his mazel shin Hashem and gave him a hay and called him Avraham. So what's the understanding? B'tchila in the beginning, Nasa Av Laram. He was the father, so to speak, of Aram, where he was born, where he was from. Ulubasof, and at the end, Asa Av Lekola Olam Kulo. Okay? Now the word Avraham means Av Le Ham. Ham means Hamon, which means the, the whole world. Okay? So he became a leader of the whole world. Sarai, originally Sarah's name was Sarai. He Sarah. Petrila Nasa Sarai Le Umasa. She was an empress, you know, a, 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 a majesty for her nation. Ulubasof was Sarai, which means more singular, more personal, my my Sarah, my uh, my my Empress, Ulubasof, and at the end, Nasa Sarah Le Kolay Le she became uh, this majesty, this Empress for the whole world, because again, Sarah is not personal Sarai, uh, it's more uh, open-ended. Okay, now the Gemara continues. Tani bar kapara bar kapara learn kol akir la Avram Avram. Whoever calls Avraham Avram, over by say he's over in a uh, uh, he he transgresses a passive commandment. Shnei mar vayi Hashem cha Avram. Your name shnei. Okay, Rabbi Lazar Imer over by lav. He takes it the next a step further and he says, No, you're you're actually over a lav. You're transgressing uh, a, a negative commandment. Shnei mar vayi kara ayd Hashem cha Avram. Your name should not be Avram. So the Gemara says, wait a minute. Elameata Karla Sara Sarai Hachanami. Also, if one calls uh, uh, Sara Sarai, right, it should be the same deal because she's also she, she was, her name was changed. So the Gemara says, no. Hasam Kutchabrichu Amar La Avram. That was a special Sivoy commandment that was given to Avram that said Sarai Ishtachalit Tikras Shema Sarai Kisar Shema. That was a more personal, private matter that Hashem told Avram that you should call your wife Sarai Sarah. But it wasn't, uh, you know, for forever and for the whole world. So the Gemara says, El Meata, Kerli Yaakov, Yaakov, Hachanami, right? We had before the can't be. And we know that if, one, if, Yaakov, if someone calls Yaakov, Yaakov, we should have the same problem over an, uh, an Asay or over an Alav. So the Gemara says, no. Shani Hasan, Tahadra, Hadre, Kra. The verse itself. Right after that, so the verse says, Hashem told Yisrael, in an appearance at night, Yaakov, Yaakov, he calls him Yaakov, Yaakov. So the verse itself, right after saying, your name should only be Yisrael, calls him Yaakov. So you see the foundation still was his name Yaakov. The primary, the main name to be used after that was Yisrael, but you could still use Yaakov. Must have reviews you by Ravin. Uh, reviews you by Ravin asks, each him reviews you by Zvita. Atta hu Hashem alokim. The verse says, You are God. Hashem acharta be Avram. You chose an Avram. So you see, this is in Nehemiah that was written generations and generations later. And it says, Avram. 
How could that be? Amar lei hasam over there navihu to come misadir l'shmachid rachmana who's giving praise to Hashem my to have a meaning it's writing it through the eyes of the navi and the navi saying Hashem you were the one who chose Avram now when he chose Avram he was in fact Avram he was not Avraham so therefore it's just a, sort of a recap uh, a remembrance of that time and therefore it's okay. Hadron Allah may aim aside. Then the Gemara, now the Mishnah uh, goes into the halachas of Krishma. The first parak we seem to have discussed the the times of Krishma, the the dinim of the the brachas before and after Krishma. We haven't really talked much about Krishma. So now the Mishnah is going to start talking about the halachas of Krishma. Okay, so Hayakayre Batara. If one was reading in the Torah, the Gis Maramikra, the time came. Okay, time for Shema came in the in the morning or the evening. And now that he has the responsibility of saying Shema, and it happens to be that where he's up to in the Torah is the parsha of Shema, which is found in the Torah. So im chivin libo yata im if he had in mind he would be yotzi. Okay, the Gemara is going to explain what's the case talking about here. We'll, we'll hold it for a second, but at face value, if one's reading in the Torah, uh, and we'll see what, what, what the example is, but once reading the Torah, he wasn't thinking about Krishna, uh, and the time came from to say Krishna, he was up to that specific, those specific psukim of Shema Yisrael in the in the Torah. If he has in mind to be to be fulfill his obligation of saying Shema, he is yotzi. Okay. Now the Gemara, the Mishnah continues. Beprakim shoel b'pnei hakavod umeishiv. Okay. Beprakim means in between the paragraphs, as we're going to see in a minute, between Shema and uh, and v'yahavta, between I'm sorry, Shema and then v'yahavta in between v'haya, v'haya in between v'yomer, v'yomer between emes v'yatsef. That's considered beprakim in between the chapters. Shoel m'pnei hakavod. He can ask uh, the well-being of someone who he honors. Okay. Now the Gemara is going to get into this. What this means. But uh, at face value, what we're going to say here, the assumption is, is that if you can, you can interrupt in the middle of your Shema to to ask to say Shalom Aleichem and ask how someone's doing, um, you can certainly answer if they say hello to you. Okay, that's a given. So we'll, we'll have to see what what it's what it's saying over here. But Prakim, in between the p- chapters of Shema, Shalom Apnei Akavit, one can ask, say Shalom Aleichem, how you're doing, to someone who he honors. Okay. Also, the commentaries explain: Is the honor here, uh, you know, an objective honor? Is it a, a, an honor that one's responsible for the Torah, like honoring one's parents? Uh, this is this is also discussed. Umeshiv, and one can answer. Okay, to, to someone who says hello to him in between the paragraphs. Ubeemsa, but if one's in the middle of the par- one of the paragraphs, right? One in the middle of the Shema or in the middle of the Baha'i or in the middle of Ayomer. Shol Yuri, he can only ask s- someone how they're doing, how you're doing, uh, if he fears them. So again, the fear over here, different explanations. Rashi actually learns fear here is he's afraid for his life. Now the commentaries explain it can't be literally it's afraid for his life because you're pikuach nefesh you're allowed to transgress any mitzvah, any mitzvah in the Torah. Okay, so it can't be talking about someone that uh, we're afraid that he's actually going to kill you if you don't say hello to him because it's certainly we wouldn't need a mission to tell me that. So they explain that mipnei yira means uh, someone who is in power who's in a point of a place of control that he actually could kill you if he'd wanted to. Okay, so not that he's going to kill you for not saying hello, but you have a certain fear that's uh, that's intrinsic in the relationship between the person in the middle of saying Shema and the person who's walking up to him. Umeshiv, and he could certainly answer. Divri Reb Meir. That's what the words of Reb Meir. Okay? Reb Yehuda Omer. Reb Yehuda says, Be'emta, in the middle of paragraphs, in the middle of one of the paragraphs of Shema, Shalma Pnei Yira, you can ask how one is doing if you have fear for that person. Umeshiv Pnei HaKavid, and you can answer, even if you don't have fear, but if someone who you respect or honor, you, whether you have to honor them or you just happen to honor them, uh, it, it says hello to you, you can answer them back. Ubiprakim, and in between chapters, Shalma Pnei HaKavid, you can even ask uh, someone who you just honor. Umeshiv Shalom Pnei and you could say hello back to someone who says hello to to you, uh, to anyone, even someone you don't particularly honor or fear. Okay, now the Mishnah continues. This is what is considered to be between the Prakim. Between the first and the second. Between the second and Shema. Between the second and Shema. 
Those are considered in between, uh, each one of those is considered a paragraph, and in between the paragraphs would be in between one of those paragraphs. Rabbi Huda Omer, Rabbi Huda adds, between the last p- 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 paragraph of Shema and the MS Vyatsa that we say in the morning, or the if Yamuna calls us, we say at night, lo yavsik, you shouldn't be yavsik at all. So again, the commentaries explain here, so you shouldn't be yavsik, and meaning even for someone you fear, or uh, you shouldn't be yavsik, you know, there's different uh, ways of reading this. Okay, so he says you shouldn't be yafsik. So it's one, it's one uh, idea, one, one, one uh, concentrate, one thread of thought, as we'll see in the Gemara. Amar Rishu Makarach, Rishu Makarach says, Lama Kadma Parsha Shema Levahayim Shemaya. Why is the Parsha of Shema given before Levahayim Shemaya? Kadesh Yikabel Alav Al Malchus Shemayim Tchila, because Shema is accepting upon oneself uh, the the supreme. Uh, d- dominion of Hashem's uh, Malchus, and uh, that's the most important that he r- takes upon himself the Malchus Shemayim first. The Achar Kach, and after Makabal Alav Al Mitzvahs, then he takes upon himself the Al Mitzvahs that we say in the next paragraph of Vayomer Shemayah. The Vayomer, the reason why Vayomer Shemayah is before Vayomer is because Vayomer Shemayah is Noig Bein Bayom Ubein Malayla, because Vayomer Shemayah has in it the Mitzvah of of saying of 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 Liman Torah. Uh, which we see in the Lamanat of and that is a mitzvah that applies to day and night, versus Vayomer, which is the paragraph of Tzitzis, which is Enonoik Ela Bayom Bavad, which only applies to the day. Okay, so uh, again, the commentaries explain over here that uh, the, 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 this question is a little bit loaded because it can't mean Lama Karma Parsha Shema Vahayim Shemaya. doesn't mean it's a little bit more than just why is one before the other, uh, and that's why it gives this, this sort of intricate, complex answer that it's, it's really b- between the lines, what the, what the Parshas are about, uh, that we put it in this order. It can't be because that's how it's written in the Torah, because in fact, the Parshas of Shema and Vahayim Shemaya are found in uh, by Midbar, and the Parsha of Vayomer, which is afterwards, is found. Uh, I'm sorry, the parsha of uh, of Shema Vahoya are in fact um, found in Devarim, and the parsha of Vayomer of the Sitzes is in uh, is in uh, Bamidbar. So it wouldn't make sense to say that uh, that uh, that that was it, that's in order uh, that's written in the Torah. Okay, so the Mishnah uh, had, had explained originally that uh, if someone's reading the Torah and he wasn't having in mind to say Shema, and then he, he got up to that paragraph of the Shema and he had in mind he'd be Yotza. So the Gemara says Shema Mino, we see from here, Mitzvah Srichas Kavana. The inference is, uh, now this is a, a lot of big discussion in other places in Shas about whether a mitzvah needs to have kavana. That means if I, the, the classic case is talking about if a person's walking and he hears some blowings of, of a horn and he doesn't know what it is and he finds out after that it was in, indeed a, a chauffeur blown. And he have in mind to hear it if it be yotza or not. So over here our mission seems to be pointed to the fact that a mitzvah needs kavana because it says that he didn't have in mind to, to read then he wouldn't be yotza. He'd have to actually have in mind to be fulfilling the obligation of Shema. So the Lord says no, that's not true. Why? Because my mechivin liba likrois, likrois. He's reading. What do you mean he has in mind to read? He is reading. Vakakari. So the answer is no. Bakari lehegia. It's talking about one who is a scribe and is actually reading the Torah just in order to check it for no mistakes. So when one does it that way, uh, different opinions in the uh, Rashi, Tosfos over here, but uh, the two basic opinions that are given are when one is reading to check it, either he's, he's not really uh, reading it well, He's, he's sort of skimming. Uh, he's not even reading it. It's, you wouldn't call it reading it. Uh, it's not, it's, 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 he's not even having a mind to read it. You couldn't even call it reciting the Shema because he's not, he's not in fact, reading it. He's just uh, he's just sort of glancing over it. If he happens to be you know, saying it out loud, that's just a happy chance. That's not what he's intending to do. He's not intending to read it. Where according to Tosas learns, because like, yeah, uh, means in order to check it. So when one checks it, he's actually is just trying to make sure the letters, the correct letters are there. So he'll read it in a totally wrong way. A mispronunciation, he'll mispr- he'll mispronounce the whole thing. He won't say Shema. He'll say uh, Shema or uh, you know uh, Israel. He'll say he'll say Yisrael. He'll just want to read it to make sure that the letters are enunciated, that they're that they're correctly written. Okay, so he's not even. So he actually, from here, from our mission, we don't see that one uh, indeed has to have a kavana when doing it. It's probably because this in this particular case. He, he wasn't having kavana for any for reading, so you you couldn't learn from here that he had to have kavana to be fulfilling the mitzvah of Shema. Now the Gemara continues. Tanur Abanan, we learned. Kriyishma kichsava divrei Rebbe. Rebbe says that Kriyishma must be said in the way that it's written. It has to be written said in Hebrew. 
Okay? The Chacham Amarim Baruch HaLashon know it can be said in any language. So the Gemara says, My time is a Rebbe. What's Rebbe's reasoning? That it, could be, that it has to be done in Hebrew. Amakra, the Pasuk says, Vahayu. Right? When you say, Vahayu ha-dvarim ha-ela sh'anoichi mitzav chayim ala vavecha. And Vahayu is, as they will be. And Vahayu bavyasan you. And we know that they're in Hebrew, so they must be read in Hebrew. For Rabbanon, my time, I wonder if say it could be in any language. Amar Kra, because the verse says, Shema. Okay, now Shema means to listen. Hear, hear, O Israel. Now, here means, Bechol Lashon Shat Shema, in any language that you understand. So that seems to be the point of the Machlokas. And the Gemara goes back and forth. Rabbanon, the Rebbe Nami, first wide line on the bottom of the Daf of your Gimel. According to Rebbe, Haksiv Shema. It also says Shema according to Rebbe. So what's he going to do with the word the, the word Shema? Shema seems to imply that one uh, could do it in any language. So he says, That one actually has to hear, literally hear, what one uh, uh, says from his mouth. Meaning, when you to fulfill the obligation, uh, fulfill your obligation of saying Shema, you actually have to uh, enunciate and pronounce out loud the words and hear them with your ears. For Rabbanan Savri, the Rabbanan holder are of the opinion the command of Omar they don't hold this at all. They hold that even if one didn't say it loud enough that it was audible to his own ear, he still could have fulfilled his obligation of saying the Shema. Now, the Gemara asks, According to the Rabbana, it also says, Vahayu, which seems to imply as they are in Hebrew. So the Gemara says, No, that they need, that Vahayu, it should be as it is, meaning that you can't read it out of order. Again, two ways of understanding, out of order, meaning that you, you mix up the verses. You have one verse before the other, or you know, or uh, a, 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 in between the verses that you mix up. Or the Mafre means actually the words within a verse that you mix up. You do it out of order. As I said earlier, as I noted, it obviously can't be referring to the paragraphs in order because the paragraphs aren't in order as they're written in the Torah. Okay? The Rebbe, and Rebbe, according to Rebbe, how is he going to know uh, that, 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 it, that, it, that, it, that it can't be read, read out of order? Right? How is he going to know that? The Pasuk says, These words. Now, it should have just said, Ha'ela, these words. What's Hadvarim? The extra hey is to tell you that it has to be in order. Vrabadan Dvarim Hadvarim Light Darshi. They they don't have this uh, this limit of Dvarim Hadvarim. They're not so, so nitpicky on the extra letter, so they're not going to learn it from there. So now the Gemara says, Lamemar, we we have to we could say, we could infer to solve our Rebbe. The Rebbe's opinion is to call Hatara Kula Bakal Lasha Nemra. That the whole Torah uh, could be said in any language. Now, the commentators explain over here that, that the, this is probably talking about uh, when we read the Torah uh, the rest of the year. Meaning, when we read the Torah the rest of the year, during on uh, Mondays and Thursdays or on Shabbos, uh, it must mean that, according to Rebbe, that the whole Torah could be said in any language. Why? Because if it has to be in Hebrew, the Yisrael Kedayt the Blushen Hakodesh never has to be in the holy language of Hebrew. Vahayu, the person, the Kasper Achman Alamali, he wouldn't need the verse here to specifically say that Shema must be in Hebrew, right? Because the rest of the Torah has to be in Hebrew too. Must be that the rest of the Torah, when you read it, does not have to be in Hebrew. Okay, that's why Vahayu over here is coming to tell me specifically it has to be in Hebrew. So the Gemara says. Uh, the Gemara says that uh, the Gemara says no, not true, because it's true. We would still need it, because the verse says Shema, and as we learned according to Rabban and Shema, they they say use the word Shema to mean it in any language. So Shema would tell me in any language. So it says Rebbe, even though the rest of the Torah may have to be also in Hebrew regarding Shema, I need a specific verse to tell me that it has to be in Hebrew, so as one shouldn't make the mistake to think that uh, it, it could be in any language. Okay, and Rabba, uh, the Rabbanan. Lememra to suffer Rabbana and the opposite to call the Torah cool Lashon Lashon Hakodesh Nemra that the rest of the Torah uh, has to be done Lashon Hakodesh. Why? To Yisak that the Bchal Lashon that it could be in any language read Shema the Kasher Rachman Alamli. Why do we need the verse to specifically go out of its way and say here listen that it could be in any language? Must be the Gemara says no because it's true. We should say Vahayu because the opposite word Vahayu would tell you that it would have to be in Hebrew. So it comes along the pasuk of Shema that we can't infer that regarding the rest of the Torah. Other commentaries here learn that um, that this can't be talking about reading the, the Torah on Mondays and Thursdays because that's only rabbinic. So we wouldn't have a verse to tell me a rabbinic obligation uh, that has to be in order or in, or in Hebrew. So they say it's referring to the the, the biblical obligation like the Parsha Samalek uh, and etc. Okay, two lines from the bottom. The Gemara continues. 
We learned Vahayu what does the word Vahayu mean? Shalaya Shalaya Kalama Freya shouldn't be rated out of order. Ha Devarim what is that for? Yachal, you might think that hey, the words the pasuk says hadavarim ela al sharnek mitavach hayayim alav avecha. You might think called parsha tzricha kavana that the whole parsha needs to have proper concentration. They're fulfilling the shema. Tamelomar ha'ela only these that ad kan tzricha kavana mikan ve'elach in tzricha kavana divri rebel yezer only until the words alav avecha. Okay. Now, if you look into the Shema, we say Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokin Hashem Echad. The Haftas Hashem Lokach B'Chol Avav B'Chol Nash B'Chol Miyadecha. V'Achayu Hadivarim Ha'Ela. These words should be. Okay. Now, only up until there, because we say after that, Hayu Hadivarim Ela Sher Nochi Mitzav Chayim Alav Avecha. That you one has to have concentration on. The rest of the parsha one does not. Amalei Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva says, Harei Omer. Turn the page. We say it Asher Nochi Mitzav Chayim Alav Avecha. Okay, Mikan Atalama. From here we learn Shikala Parsha Kula Tzricha Kavana. He argues and says, no, the whole first paragraph of Shema needs to have proper concentration. And Amar Rabba Barachana, Amar Rav Yochanan says Rabba Barachana in the name of Rav Yochanan. Halacha Kribi Akiva. The halacha is like Kribi Akiva that you need to have Kavana the whole first paragraph. And Ika Demasli Law Ahadatanya. Some say statement of Rabbi Barachana and Rabbi Yochanan was read on this price, a different one, that says like this, HaKoyre Shema, one who reads the Shema, Tzarech Shechaven Es Libo, concentration, and Rav Acha, Mishim Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Kevin Shechiven Libo, Beperek Rishon, once one has a paragraph, Shuv Ene Tzarech, he doesn't need to have proper concentration, he's fulfilling the obligation of Shema, and on that, Omar Rabbi Barachana, Omar Rabbi Yochanan, Halacha Kerav Acha, Halacha Zayk Rav Acha, Sh'omar Mishim Rabbi Yehuda, Okay? Tani Idach. Vahayu, we said Vahayu, what does that mean? Shalai Yikr la Mafreya. Shouldn't be read out of order. Alev Avecha. Revzut Jo'imer Ad Khan Mitzvah's Kavana. Up until here, does one have to have a proper concentration? And Mikan Ve'elech, from here on, Mitzvah's Kriya. He only gets a Mitzvah for reading it. Reading the words. And Ryoshi Omar, Ad Ka Mitzvah's Kriya. No, up until the words Alev Avecha, one gets a Mitzvah for reading. And Mikan Ve'elech, Mitzvah, Mikan Ve'elech, Mitzvah's Kavana. He gets the Mitzvah of proper concentration. So the Gemara says, "Maish no mikan ve'elach mitzvahs kriya." Why does he hold that you get from uh, the words "alam avecha" till the end of Shema? One gets uh, reward for the gets a mitzvah for mitzvah kriya. The chesiv the pasuk says, "Ladaber bam." Right? We say to speak in them, which is a reference to speaking, which is saying them. Hachanami, what do you mean? Hachesiv v'dibarta bam. It says you should speak on them. And that verse of Dibar Tabam is in the first paragraph. So you should also get a mitzvah of reading, uh, of just the reading part of it, also for the first paragraph. So the Gemara says, no, you misunderstood me. Hachi Kamar, this is what I meant to say. Ad kan mitzvahs kavana vikriya. Up until the words Alam Avecha, one gets reward, one gets a mitzvah for having proper concentration and for reading. But Mikan Ve'elech, from there on, kriya belay kavana. One gets a mitzvah of kriya without kavana. The Gemara says, wait a minute. Oh my shna, and why is it that ad kan mitzvah kavana vikriya that until alav avecha one gets for, gets a mitzvah for kriya and kavana dechsev alav avecha v'dibar tabam because it has those two points alav avecha put it on your heart means to concentrate and v'dibar tabam it means to speak in them which which is mitzvah kriya hasam nami also in the second paragraph of ahaya haksev alav avechem l'daber bam it also says alav avechem you should put it on your heart doesn't that mean that you get a reward you get a mitzvah for concentration over there too. And you should have to have concentration in the second paragraph of Shema as well. The Gemara says no, because that has a different use. Haumi ba'ile, we need alav avachem in the second paragraph. Lichid Reb Yitzchak for the words of Reb Yitzchak to Amar who said, "V'samte mistevarai ela." You should put these words on your heart. Sricha should tehesima kenagad halev that one should have a placement opposite the heart, i.e., the tefill and the phylacteries that go on the arm. They should be uh, in the place of where the bicep is, uh, opposite the heart. Okay, so it's not talking about have, having proper intention. Then the Gemara continues. Amar Mar. We had a quote, Rav Yoshe Omer. Rav Yoshe said, Ad Khan Mrs. Kriya, on the first paragraph you get Mrs. Kriya, and Mikan Ve'elech, from there on you get Mrs. Kavana. So the Gemara says the same concept. Ma'ishim Mikan Ve'elech Mrs. Kavana, Mishim Dechsev Alev Avachem, because it says Alev Avachem, Hachanami Yaksev Alev Avecha. In the first paragraph, the Gemara says Hachi Kamar Ad Kam Mrs. Kriya Ve'Kavana. In the first paragraph you get a mitzvah for Kriya and Kavana. But Mikan Ve'elech, he he argues and says you get Kavana below Kriya. 
So the Gemara says the same question. Umayishna ad kan mitzvah kriya v'kavana d'chsev al levavecha and v'dibar tabam. It has both those points. Hasam nami haksev al levavechem l'daber bam. So it says l'daber bam also in the second paragraph, where one should get a mitzvah for the reading. So the Gemara says no because that has a different use. It's used for something else. I hope it's very turkesiv. V'alchi kamei rachmona. That's referring to learning Torah, and this is what Hashem in the Torah was trying to tell you. Agmarichu banaichu teach your children Torah. Kehecha delikus rebuhu that they should become fluent in it, and they should study it constantly. Okay? Two dots, first wide line, the Gemara continues. Taner Abonan, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elekeinu Hashem Echad. Ad kan tzricha kavanas halev. Diver Emer. Okay, according to Rameir, that's all you need Kavana for. The first uh, the first line that we say Shema in. Amar Rava, Rava says Halacha Kramer. Okay, that's the Halacha. Tanya Sumcha Zomer, Sumcha says, Kol ha-ma'arich be'echad, whoever uh, elongates in echad, ma'arich in lo'yom v'shanosav, he gets to live extra long days and years. He lives a long life. Amar Ravach Bar Yaakov, Ubedalas, he qualifies that by saying that the part that you're actually supposed to extend is the dalit, that we say echad. So it's supposed to be echad. The, the, that's where the the extra dalit is. The whole different sheet is brought down in the in the poskim of how one uh, elongates a dalit. The, one, one of the sheets is actually you say a th, 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 a th, that's the only way you can actually elongate the sound of a d d, which is a, seems to be a pretty sharp sound. So ubedal has to be in the dalit. Now Rashi Rashi says in your haste to uh, elongate the dalit of the echad, one should be careful over the ches because when you say echad and you get to the dalid you may jump over the ches and not pronounce it with a with a shva of a ch but rather with a pot with, I'm sorry uh, with with the kamat uh, of the uh, echad but you'll pronounce it with a with a uh, shva of a ch and you'll which is a mispr- mispronunciation of the word Okay, so you should be careful. Rav Yirmiya, Av Yosef, Kameder of Chibar Abba, he was saying from Rav Chibar Abba, Chazid de Av Ma'arach Tuva, he was saying the 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 Dalit for a long time, and to all, all the different uh, celestial beings and uh, and all spiritual different kinds of concentrations. And Amar he told him, Kevan da Amlach de Lamal Lamat La Baruchas Hashemayim Sula Yitzrichas A Kinged, meaning you have mentally uh, uh, crowned Hashem in the uh, up and down, up in the heavens, down in the earth, and the four ruchos, the four winds, the four, the four directions of the heaven. So that's all you have to have in mind for. And that's what's brought down the halacha, and uh, we'll see in a minute. Amar Rav Nassim bar Amar Ukva, Amar Rav Yehuda, Alevavecha ba'amida. The words Alevavecha should be standing still. I mean, you shouldn't be walking. So the Gemara says, Alevavecha sa'kadaydach. Just those two words. You should have concentration just on those two words. So the Mar says, Until the words of Ad Alev uh, uh, until the words Alev Avecha. Bamida should be standing still. You shouldn't walk. After that, you can you can walk on your way and do what you gotta do. For the entire thing, you should stand, you should st- you should stop and you shouldn't move for. it goes according to his reasoning. That the obligation of Shema is indeed the entire first paragraph. So if it's about the first paragraph, then one shouldn't walk around because one will not have proper concentration. And this is a uh, Brought down that uh, that we know the the rush explains it a bit differently. I and Shum, but uh, basic the simple understanding is that when one walks around, it's very difficult for one to have concentration. Okay, Taner we learned Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Zu Krish Mashiv Yudanasi. This was the whole Shema of Yudanasi. Yudanasi was uh, obviously a big time chacham, and he only learned day and night, and he didn't have time for Shema. He was in the middle of his learning, so he had the biblical obligation of Shema in his time. So he would just say the first line, the first verse. Okay, Amalei Rav Chia. Rav told Rav Chia, I used to study with him, and I used to not see him say Shema. I used to see him not uh, accept upon himself the yoke of heaven. Because I'd be learning middle of Shir and he wouldn't stop. Amalei um, told him, Bar Pachti, son of, son of noble ones, son of princes. When in the middle of the Shir, you ever notice that he takes his hand sometimes and he goes like this? Bisha at the time, Shemavir Yadav Alpanov, when he literally passes his hand over his face, Mekabal Alav Almach Shemayim. That is when he's saying Shema. In that moment, middle of Shir, someone's asking a question, he goes like that, he says, Shema Yisrael Shemachad. And he already said, Was Yotzi Shema. 
Okay, and that's actually brought down the halacha from there. That's the source of why we uh, close our eyes. Some say it's because that one is supposed to actually be mechavin, like we said before, to the up, down, and the four ruchos, the four directions of where Hashem's presence is, up, up, you know, uh, left, right, up, and down, uh, and behind and in front of you. And therefore, one should actually sign with his eyes and uh, re- make a reference to up, down directions for proper concentration so Rebbe would do that so he didn't want anyone to see so he would cover his eyes okay now the Gemara asks first of the very wide lines Chayzer v'gaimra did after when he finished his shir did he go back and say the whole thing of the Shema the whole, the rest of the paragraphs oh in a Chayzer v'gaimra who did not complete it right? the commentaries point out that it must have been talking about that he finished finished the shir after the Zman Krishma, because if it was during the Zman Krishma, certainly he would have done it, uh, the Kilchas, the best way to do it, and said the other paragraph. So it must have been after the Zman of Krishma that he go back and say him anyway. So Bar Kapara Omar, uh, Omer, he said, Eino Chos He did not. Rav Shem Rebbe Omer Chos Vergomer. He did. And I'm going about Bar Kapara, Rav Shem Rebbe. Bar Kapara told Shem Rebbe, Bishlam and Lijiji, according to me, that I say that he did not go back and say the other verses. Therefore, Lijiji da Amina, Eino he didn't go back and complete the rest of the paragraphs. Hainu de Mahad Rebbe Ashmaisa de Isbeis Yis Mizrayim. Rebbe, whenever he was teaching a shir in the base medrash, he would always make an attempt to always find some reference to Yis Mizrayim. Why? Because he wanted to say the uh, the he wanted to have a mention of Yis Mizrayim bisman bismana the time of when one's supposed to say Krishna. So therefore, it makes sense because he wasn't going to say it later. El according to you, to Amrit Chayzer Vagarim, that he would say it later the the Kriyshma, and he would say his Mitzrayim then. So Lamalei Laduri Kedil Haskis Yisim Mitzrayim Bismana. I'm sorry, Lamalei Laduri. Why would he go go after uh, specifically a parsha to try to find to, to darshan a little bit about Yisim Mitzrayim? So the more answers, no, it's not. A, that's not a proof because Kedil Haskis Yisim Mitzrayim Bismana. Even though he would. Uh, say it later or wouldn't say it later, that's not a good proof because the fact that he would go after uh, a, a parsha of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim in the middle of the shir was because he wanted to say Yitzhiz Mitzrayim bismah. No, in the time of when one was supposed to say Krishma. There's special Indian to say a mention of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim during that time. Now, the fact that when he finished later, whether he said, said Shema or didn't say the rest of the paragraphs, that has nothing to do with the fact that he wanted to say a mention of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim uh, later, uh, during, during this month. Okay? So the Gemara continues. Amar Rav Ila, Bereder of Shmuel Bar Marsa. Rav Ila, the son of Shmuel Bar Marsa, said, "Mishmed Rav, the name of Rav." Amar Shma Yisrael Hashem Lakin Hashem Echad. If one says the first verse and he's tired at night, Venan as Peshina, and he got overcome, he got sleepy, drowsy, Yotza, and he fell asleep, he is Yotza, he fulfilled his obligation. And Amar Rav Nachman the Torah, Rav Nachman used to tell Doru his slave, his servant, Pepsuka Kama, the first verse of Shma Yisrael Hashem Lakin Hashem Echad, Tzaron. You pain me. Make sure you kick me around, and make sure that I don't uh, that I don't that I'm not sleeping and I'm having proper concentration. But if you see, I'm really don't don't, uh, don't give me a hard time, please. And uh, and I'll, uh, I was already fulfilling my obligation. Amalei Raviosa, the Raviosa Bere, Duraba, Avucha Hechi Haberavid, your father, what would he do? Amalei, he told him, Psuka Kam in the first verse, have him because Nafshi, he would pain him proper concentration and said the first verse. But Tfei, more than a of Mitzar Nafshe. He wouldn't. And I remember Yosef, another quote from Yosef, But Pirton on one's back, La Yikr Krishma, one should not read Krishma. So that's a statement. It's uh, lying on one's back is uh, and his face above is sort of a certain haughtiness. It's not a way to be Makabel Hamal Chushamayim. Says the Gemara, wait a minute. Mikra hu delay likri. The inference is that one sun shishma. One sun shishma. Ha migna shaperda, but you could sleep like that? You're not allowed to sleep like that. Far rishu valevi laid a man to gani apirkit. He would curse one who slept on his back. Okay? So the Gemara says, Amri migna kimat slil shaperda. If one's lying on his back and he turns a bit to the side, then it's in, in fact okay. Okay, Mikra. When it comes to Shema, Afagav de Matzli Nami. Also, even if one turns himself a little bit to the side, that's still not okay. Okay, one has to be uh, completely either turned to the side or sitting up. It says the Gemara of Rav Yochanan Matzli Bikar. We know Rav Yochanan. Uh, he would just lie, he would lie on his back and just turn a bit, do that little bit, which we say is okay to sleep, but it's not okay to say Shema. How come he would do it like that? The Gemara says Shani Rav Yochanan. Rav Yochanan was different. De Baal have He was in fact a, a very large man. Uh, he was obese, and because he was obese, it was very difficult for him to turn completely on his side. So he would say Shema like this. Okay, it's really a that one's actually not supposed to sleep on his back or on his stomach. On the back, we're afraid of, uh, again, this yuhara, this uh, this um, 
haughtiness and went on stomach because it's uh, it could cause seminal emissions. Okay, so we'll take it from the two dots here tomorrow.